Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video, we'll be looking at projectiles launched at an angle. In this problem, Ken is riding his bike off of a 42 degree ramp at 4 meters per second. We're looking to complete the data table below to show and express all the kinematics and all the kinematic variables in this problem. We have initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration time, displacement, and also what was the impact velocity. So let's start this problem off by writing down a few variables that we know. All right. If I look at the variables here, um, we do know by now that the acceleration in the y dimension is always going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And let's put a label of units on that as well. And also going downward, it's going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. And we also know that horizontally, there is not going to be any acceleration. We know now that he hit the ramp at 42 degrees. So he hits this ramp at 42 degrees. And when he hits the ramp, his velocity is... 4 meters per second. Now that's going to be a resultant velocity. And because it's a resultant velocity, we're going to need to find out actually what the horizontal component was and also what the vertical component was as well. And we're going to use sine, cosine, tangent, etc. to solve this problem. So I do know that the sine of 42 degrees is equal to my y value divided by my resultant. The resultant is going to be 4 meters per second. And so if I rearrange this algebraically, it's going to become 4 multiplied by the sine of 42 degrees is going to equal my y component of velocity. Once you crunch the numbers, you'll find that y is going to be equal to 2.68 meters per second. Now that's going to indicate what is my initial, my initial upwards velocity. And that is a positive velocity. Well, when I reach the very top of my journey, when I reach the very top of my height that my projectile will be flying, my projectile is this guy on his bike when he reaches his maximum point up here right here he's not going any higher so therefore he stopped going upwards so upwards we do have a final velocity of zero meters per second now at that point he's going to start traveling downward again he's going to start traveling downward and he's going to hit the ground over here well when he hits the ground over there he will be now traveling with the same velocity that he started off with 2.68 meters per second but it is going to be negative because he's going downward now at the very point up here where his final velocity y is zero I also want you to notice that his downward initial velocity is starting to go down now when he starts going downward he has no downward velocity so his initial velocity is going to be zero meters per second the same as his final velocity of going upwards. Okay, that's awesome. We now need to resolve our x component. How fast is our biker riding horizontally? In order to find out how fast he's traveling horizontally, we're going to use cosine of 42 degrees is going to be equal to my x component divided by the hypotenuse or the resultant which is 4. We need to solve for x so we're going to rearrange our formula to make it 4 times cosine of 42 degrees. And the x component is going to be equal to 2.97 meters per second. And so my x component is 2.97 meters per second. 
because there's zero acceleration, it's also going to be my final velocity as well. So what I've gotten here is that my upwards velocity, when I start off, is 2.68. And my horizontal velocity, when I start off, my initial, is going to be 2.97 meters per second. Okay, that takes care of my initial and my final velocities for both x and y. We're now going to use some kinematic equations to solve for the amount of time we've been in the air for how high we've went and how far we've went, and also going to look at the impact velocity as well. Okay, on to the kinematic equations. I want to look first for time. You could have also chosen displacement too. Now, for time, I've chosen the equation VF equals VI plus AT. Had you wanted to start the problem off by starting for displacement, you would have used one that had displacement in it, such as VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. That definitely is uh, obtainable. We would not be able to use this one yet because you have both time and displacement in the same formula, and those are two unknowns. We generally like to have one unknown per formula. So I just decided to start with time first. How much time will I be in the air for? And I'm going to use VF equals VI plus AT, and specifically I'm going to use the Y variables. So my VFY going upwards, VFY is 0 meters per second, my initial velocity was 2.68 meters per second plus acceleration is negative 9.8 multiplied by my time. And I'm going to have to isolate time. That's what I'm solving for. So I'm going to start off by rearranging my problem a little bit. I'll have negative 2.68 is going to be equal to negative 9.8 multiplied by time. And I'm just going to do another rearrangement here as well. Negative 2.68 divided by, sorry about the little uh, messiness there, but negative 2.68 divided by negative 9.8 is going to equal the time. And the amount of time I am in the air for is, and the amount of time that it will take is going to be 0.273. Seconds, and I'm going to label that in here. Now, just so we know, and we're all on the same page here, I am riding my bike off of a 42 degree ramp at 4 meters per second. I'm going to reach a peak height, and that is the amount of time that it takes to get to the peak height. Because I want you to understand in the kinematic equation, I chose zero as my VF. So my VF y was equal to zero and it is only equal to zero at the very top of my journey so the first half of my journey takes 0 0.273 seconds and you're also going to find that the last half of my journey is the same amount of time 0 0.273 so let's fill our chart in as well Therefore, the total amount of time that it takes me to go my horizontal distance is going to be 2 times 0.273 for a velocity of, for an amount of time rather, of 0 0.5, 4, 6 seconds. I now need to find out how far I went upwards. What is my displacement from the bottom to the top? So I'm going to look now use my different kinematic equation. I have two to choose from. I can use this one right here because I see displacement. Or I could also choose this one right here. Either one is good to use. The formula I thought would be easiest to use would be VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. At the top of my journey, remember this is actually in our Y, y direction. Um, the top of my journey, I was at 0 meters per second. I stopped moving upwards. My initial velocity was 2.68, so I'm going to square that and multiply it by 2 times 9.8 times my displacement. Now, displacement is going to be the variable that I'm going to isolate and solve for. When I continue working the problem out, I find now that 0 equals positive 7.18 plus a negative 19.6 times my displacement. 
Now I'm going to subtract the 7.18 out, put it on the left-hand side of the equation, and then divide it by negative 19.6 to find my displacement. What I get is a displacement in the y as 0.37 meters. And we could check that using other formulas as well if we really needed to. So my dy is going to be 0 0.37 meters. Therefore, that's going to be the same amount of distance that I fall back down to the Earth. Okay, let's move on to our horizontal displacement. When looking for my horizontal displacement, I'm going to use the formula d equals vit plus one-half at squared. And I am also very aware that there is no acceleration in horizontally. So therefore, I'm going to cross off and not use that part of the equation. So my displacement, x-wise, is going to be equal to my initial velocity multiplied by my time. 2.97 meters per second was my initial x-velocity. The amount of time that this is in the air for is going to be double of the 2.73. 2.73 equals point. 5.46 and when I multiply them together I find out that the displacement horizontally is going to be equal to 1.62 meters that's a 1 1.62 meters is my horizontal displacement lastly what is my impact velocity? Well, actually, it's the exact same thing as your takeoff velocity. And we saw in the problem that the takeoff velocity was 4 meters per second. All right, guys, that takes care of our problem. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was helpful. Have a great night.